let's move on to an extension of XLM. And we want to extend it to a lot of languages. The previous one was about 15 languages. We want to extend it to 100 languages. And it's a matter of scale. So there's going to be very little math here, but it's a matter of how do you actually deal with those problems as you increase the scale. The underlying model is going to be Roberta. And we learned about Roberta for a single language for English. This is going to be a cross-language model for uh, multiple languages. We know that it's going to be transformer-based because Roberta is transformer-based. It's going to be multilingual. We know that Roberta is a masked language model. But what is the impressive part? It is pre-trained on text in 100 languages. So that's the scale. And then why do you want to do that? Because you're going to have cross-lingual classification. You want to do sequence labeling, like named entity recognition, or you want to do question answering. But what is the problem? You are going to run into the curse of multilinguality. What is that? How do you define it? Given a fixed model capacity. So you have this XLM Roberta as your model. And let's say that model, you are not going to enlarge it. Let's keep the model fixed, its size. On the one hand, more languages is going to lead to better cross-lingual performance. So if you include more languages, you are going to increase the performance of your downstream tasks. On low resource languages, we just saw it, Nepali was benefiting a lot, but then it's going to saturate at some point. So you're going to benefit up until the point. And after that, the overall performance on monolingual and cross-lingual benchmarks is going to drop. That was qualitatively speaking. Quantitatively speaking, this is what is happening. If you have seven languages, and let's say you are taking a look at accuracy of a classification task, maybe sentiment analysis. The low resource language is the blue bar here. The high resource languages are these ones. And this is the overall across all of those seven languages. The accuracy of the low resource language is going to increase up until the point as you increase the, lump, the number of languages that you're including, and then it's going to go down. The other one is less surprising, the orange bar here, because the more languages you start to introduce, you're hurting the high resource language. So that one is more expected. This one is not expected, this pattern here. So what is that? What is this figure? Can you summarize it? What are your observations? So there is this positive transfer, and uh, there is a trade-off between positive transfer and capacity dilution. What is that? And the other way of saying that is transfer interference trade-off. The idea is that low resource languages are going to benefit from scaling to more languages. We just saw it until your model is not, doesn't have the capacity enough to handle all of those languages at the same time. And that is where this dilution or capacity interference is going to kick in. So this could be an explanation of what is happening here. And uh, how can you deal with that? Increase the capacity of your model. If you have more languages, your model needs to have, a, have more parameters. It needs to, be, needs to have a higher capacity. What are we doing? The model is exactly the same as the previous paper. We just covered it. It's going to be a masked language model. Previously, we were using Viper encoding. Now we are going to use sentence piece and the one with the UDGram language model. So we are not going to use Viper encoding. We're going to use sentence piece with the UDGram language model. In the previous slide, we had alpha to be 0.5. And alpha being 0.5 was uh, scaling down the effect of the higher resource languages or the probability that you're going to sample from them. You are reducing that. Now you are reducing it even further. Our alpha is 0 0.3. In the previous paper, you had this language embeddings. Here, you're just going to remove it. The idea is that you can deal better with suddenly switching from one language to the other one. Your model should be able to identify what language it is on its own. And what are we doing? We are removing these embeddings. So they don't exist anymore. And then you are going to use a large vocabulary. It's a shared vocabulary among all of your 
languages, you have 100 languages, so it makes sense. You need to have a larger vocabulary size. And then you're gonna scale to 100 languages. And as soon as you scale to 100 languages, you're gonna scale the amount of training data. And the problem with Wikipedia is that it's gonna have limited scale. For Wikipedia, you have data across all of those 100 languages, but then that's not enough. You're gonna look at common crawl data and filter them. What is the effect in terms of your data sizes across all of these languages? So this axis is different, are different languages. This is a data set size. The orange one is Wikipedia. For English, you're fine. For some of the languages, you are fine. But then for the low resource ones, you have very few observations or perhaps nothing. But the good thing about common crawl is you're gonna have more of those data in those different languages, okay? Then you're gonna scale your model. You scale your data, you scale the number of languages, you're gonna scale your model. Therefore, you're gonna need a lot of GPUs. And how many of them are you gonna be using? You're gonna be using 500 NVIDIA GPUs. That's a lot. It's a lot of compute power. And then you're gonna report your results on cross-lingual classification type of tasks. One benchmark is, let's say you have a very good uh, English model already for, I don't know, sentiment analysis. You have a very good English model. Now you have a sentence, maybe it's a review on a product written in Chinese. You can translate that into English and then call your sentiment analysis algorithm on the translated sentence. And then you can report your results. How good was that? That you can do for English, French, Spanish, German, and all of these languages. And these are based on Bert and Roberta that are trained in English. The other one is uh, you're gonna, you don't have any pre-trained uh, sentiment analysis algorithm, but what you have is you have data in your own language. Maybe you have data in Chinese. You can take that data, translate them to English, and fine tune uh, on that data set, on the translated data set. That's gonna give you a fine-tuned sentiment analysis algorithm, and then you can test that and see how good that is doing. And these are giving you some benchmarks. The other options is exactly what this paper is capable of doing. And that is, uh, that is this one. I'm gonna go through that pretty shortly. But what is the other option? You have data, maybe you have reviews on a particular product in multiple different languages. That's cool. You can translate all of them into English, fine tune a model on that data and then do your classification. And that's called translate train all for all of your languages. This is just translate train for a specific language. This is translate test, which is you have a sentence in, uh, in a particular language, you translate it and then you call your English model on the translation, which is already trained on English data. So there is no training here. There is gonna be training here and fine tuning. This other one, uh, it is capable of doing transfer across languages uh, right away because you can specify what language you are working. You have only one model. This number of models is just one model. That model is pre-trained on 100 languages. Now, if somebody has a sentence that is already in Chinese, they don't have to translate it at all. They can take that sentence, push it through this model, and then fine tune in the respective language. Maybe if a sentence is in French, take that sentence, push it through this model, which is only one model, and then do your fine tuning. And that's giving you the best result because there is the way to transfer from one language to the other language. Okay, was everything clear? Okay, cool.